So I think uh, countries like Egypt uh, or uh, Saudi Arabia or the Emirates, they don't want a war on their territory. They don't want to be bombed. They don't want to uh, have disaster. Uh, and they're trying diplomatically uh, to do something. I don't think it's just empty rhetoric. Uh, every day, every week at the United Nations, there's a, another attempt at a ceasefire, another attempt at a Security Council resolution, another attempt at a General Assembly resolution. Now the United States is basically alone with Israel in saying no to the whole rest of the world. Uh, the most recent vote on Palestinian self-determination in the UN General Assembly had all countries in favor, four against Israel, the United States, Micronesia, and Nauru. <laughs> you don't get much more of a lopsided vote than that. There were a few abstentions as well. But Micronesia has 113,000 people. Nauru, with all respect, has 12,000 people. Basically, uh, the United States and Israel are alone. And so also China and Russia are looking and, you know, diplomatically, this is not, not bad for them. Uh, they're, uh, uh, the, the, the country that claims to be the world leader can't get anyone to side with it other than Micronesia and Nauru uh, and, and Israel. Uh, you have uh, the South African government filing a case in the International Court of Justice uh, asking the court to stop Israel's genocide. Uh, the United States uh, leaders uh, must know uh, that this is a case that makes the U.S. complicit because the U.S. is directly arming everything that Israel is doing by the day, by the way, not just in past stockpiles or years and years of support, but daily. The U.S. is the enabler of what Israel is doing because Israel could not do this for a few days without the United States shipments of missiles, munitions, arms equipment, and so on. So this is all extraordinary. Uh, but I think the basic answer to your question is no one wants to be bombed by Israel. And why is uh, Israel's Jewish lobby so powerful in the United States? We have impression that the Prime Minister Netanyahu is sitting in the White House instead of President Biden. Well, I think there are several uh, points to this. One is that war is the biggest business in the United States. Uh, this is a trillion dollar a year operation. Uh, we have very powerful interests in the United States that are part of this establishment, by the way, including the university systems, uh, because they get huge amounts of funding from uh, donors that are completely part of the military industrial complex, some of it quite direct because companies like Raytheon or uh, Northrop Grumman or Boeing or others give money to the universities to set up their international relations departments. Uh, the big companies, the big five, uh, Boeing and Northrop Grumman and General Dynamics, uh, Raytheon, uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, the big five have hundreds of billions of dollars of contracts from the Pentagon. And many, many other consultant companies have huge contracts. And big tech in Silicon Valley has huge contracts with the Pentagon. This is big business. So yeah. th this is a big story. It's it also, uh, and, and the Israeli military is basically a part of the US military industrial complex. So it's all part of the same story. Uh, and you have a lot of congressmen and senators, especially those on the Armed Services Committee, whose campaigns are paid for by this industry. Uh, it's it's pretty widespread. I was uh, saying to my wife uh, just uh, a few minutes ago that it's a little like asking in general what's going on, like asking someone in 100 AD 
why aren't you standing up to the Roman Empire? You know, <laughs> it's a big empire here. Uh, it's not so easy to stand up uh, to this empire. It's uh, money everywhere, jobs everywhere. Uh, you want raises, promotions, influence. You know, this is a machine. This is big business. Yeah, yeah, that is the reason that the United States is supporting that ethnic cleansing. But uh, what about Europe? Also, Europe is very weak there. Uh, especially Germany, France, uh, and Great Britain, they are supporting uh, Israeli's policy. Europe, for me, is the biggest disappointment in the last few years. Look at van der Leyen. Is she paid for by the military-industrial complex? Uh, is she paid for by the U.S. government? Uh, does she just want a job as a NATO uh, 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 Secretary General? I don't know. But she doesn't say anything about Europe's interests. Uh, it's only about America's interests. It's all part of the same war machine. I don't get it. You know, I, what I have been told by leading European politicians, by the way, one said to me, oh, they treat us like children in Washington. I, I, I'm not talking about a junior politician, and I don't want to go into names. But I could not believe it when I heard this, because I was talking to someone, a world figure, and you would say, hmm, I don't think you should let yourself be treated like children in Washington. But they do. Now, why but, is that? It is a bit of a puzzle, actually. But what is the reason that Europe is a willing vassal of the United States? Why? beats me <laughs> i mean i have to tell you of course you could say the nuclear umbrella hmm. you could say the uh, importance of the u.s and european arms industry take any of the big companies in europe they're part of the same story this is uh, this is also business in europe there's no question about it still europe is paying a heavy price for american militarism Europe is paying a heavy price for the Ukraine war because that war, honestly, honestly, if anyone knows anything about it, it's because the dimwits in the United States pushed NATO enlargement and European leaders knew that this was bad news. They knew it from 2008 onward at the Bucharest NATO summit. They said, don't do that, George, talking to George Bush. But do they tell the European people anything about this? No way. And then came the refugee crisis from Syria after 2011. How many European leaders told the truth to the European public that President Obama, wonderful President Obama, signed an order to the CIA to overthrow Bashar al-Assad and led to a refugee crisis in Europe? Well, I assume European leaders know this. It's pretty basic history, but it's not exactly covered in the European press. So Europe, which is a civilization that is 10 times older than the United States, should actually tell the United States, look, you're a kid, you know, you're breaking everything, uh, stop uh, damaging uh, everything that has been built up over hundreds of years. Europe should do that, but it doesn't do that. Mm. How would you assess the quality of uh, European leadership? We don't have any more uh, statesmen like De Gaulle, uh, Cole, uh, Brandt. What is it? Why? I can tell you, you, you can look up uh, the opinion surveys of approval ratings of the European politicians. I think it's Morning Consult that does them, and I look each week. Uh, there isn't a popular European leader. The public in Europe is against the leaders. The disapproval ratings are soaring everywhere. So it's not what I say, it's what the European people say. Uh, they know that they have weak leaders that are warmongering and that have basically fallen into line with the United States. And there are very few leaders that are saying something different. Viktor Orban is saying something different. I had a long talk with him about the Ukraine war. He makes perfect sense knows the history, has been extremely clear, and oh my God, don't mention him uh, in uh, Brussels or in Washington. But that's because he's telling the truth, actually. 
Uh, Fico in uh, Slovakia, the same way, he's telling the truth. Maybe in the Netherlands, uh, we'll see. It may take them a year to form a government, but uh, the public is not interested in this war. So this is a problem in Europe and the United States. The public is against this war. And in the United States, the public is against the war. But who's asking the public? This is a, this is a big business going on. The big business doesn't have to ask the public. That's a little quaint, that idea, that the military industrial complex has to ask the American people what they think. No way. And by the way, to keep the war going, Blinken, our Secretary of State, simply issues emergency declarations that he's going to ship more arms to Israel because it's a U.S. national security emergency to keep the slaughter going in the Gaza. What's your opinion? Are we, let me say, peace-loving people and states, especially in Europe, morally obliged to support a South African cause to, to put uh, uh, Israeli uh, on the uh, World Court of Justice? Of course we should. This is a genocide taking place before our eyes. We are aiming the public, that is, I'm not sure about our governments, but the public is aiming for peace, civility, the international rule of law. Here is a court case, thoroughly documented, 84 page detailed complaint. To read it is to listen to the horrific words coming out of the mouths of Israeli leaders not only the, the uh, uh, artillery shells coming out of their guns, they're saying what they want to do. And it's absolutely criminal intent. And that's why the South African government has taken this case to the International Court of Justice. And we should be supporting that case. But when the White House was asked about it yesterday, they said, there's no merit in this. They gave one sentence. And then the press was quiet after they gave one sentence. They just denounced the case. They said it's meritless. And that's all. Because there's no serious attempt by the United States government to find any peace right now. But you proposed a peace plan uh, to, to, to uh, end that uh, Israeli, war, Israeli war in Gaza. Uh, and what is very important is that you proposed that there should be no negotiations between Palestinians and Israelis, but the solution should be found within the framework of United Nations and especially uh, of uh, Security Council. We've had negotiations for 56 years. <laughs> you know, we don't need any more talking. Everything is clear. Everything is known. Everything that could be said has been said. And the UN Security Council has said all of this for decades, starting with UN Security Council Resolution 242 in 1967. Two states living in peace side by side on the borders of the 4th of June, 1967, full stop. That's it. We ought yeah. to implement that.